welcome to the Christian Center Church Podcast. If you'd like to sow into this ministry, you can do so at the link below. Thank you for joining us, and we hope the message today will bless you. I'm going to ask you to stand with me this morning. We're going to bless the Word, and we're going to push in and hold on. Amen. Amen. Seen a good friend of mine the other day. He told me, he said, Brother Jerry, you know what I remember the most? I said, what that? He said, you told me to push in, push in and hold on. And he's been pushing in and holding on for about 40 years. So it'll work. Amen. Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. We proclaim the goodness of God. And we thank you, Father God, for where you bring us. And we know, Father God, out of every tragedy, everything, that you're working out good stuff. Father, what the enemy meant for good, you just turn for awesomeness of who you are. And today we submit and commit. We ask you, Father God, forgive us of our sins, our shortcomings, our frailties, those people stuff. And, Father, we ask you to train us that we may be tools in your hand. And the people said, amen. Give me my one more hand clap and you can be seated. Amen. All right, we're we going to talk about it again this morning at church. Y'all ready for something to happen? You ready for your life to change? Ready for something good? Amen. Well, let me tell you, if God's going to do anything, you're going to start right where you are. Amen. Man told me one time, he said, how would you like to start revival? Well, I got, you know, got to thinking, you know, usually when I have a revival, I'm burned out for three or four days after revival. And I said, yeah, how you do that? He said, draw your circle, about a three-foot circle. And he said, when you get revival started in that three-foot circle, he said, move it to somebody else. And I said, well, there you go. I mean, you know, lots of times we wait on other people, amen. amen. But it's good to be here this morning. It's good to know that Jesus is Lord, amen. That if we'll get on board with God, things are happening, things are changing, and things that we never seen before happen for the good. Can you say amen? So it's kind of like the two boys. The two boys that was in the house and it was a Sunday evening. And the mother said, go check the car and see how much gas we got. And we're going to go to grandma's. The first boy went in there. The oldest boy went out there. And he looked at it. And he come back in with his shoulders slumped. He said, it ain't no use to try to do nothing, Mom. He said, we got a half a tank of gas. After a while, the little boy, the little boy, he come in all excited. He's all excited. He said, Mama, get your hat. Said, we got a half a tank of gas. We ready to go. It's half full. <laughs> See, sometimes it's the way you look at it, amen. And I'm looking for God to do good things, you know. But he got to deal with us, amen. Brother Mike and I was talking. You know, some people's spirituality is wearing a beanie. Some people's spirituality is wearing a ring in their nose or, or, or a cross around their neck. or wearing, Look, wearing a prayer shower don't make you spiritual. A beanie don't make you spiritual. And laying, on the, laying out on the ground don't make you spiritual. Walking in the Word makes you spiritual. Jesus said, my word are spirit and truth. He said, they're spirit and life, what Jesus said they was. That's, that's what, what we need to hold to. Amen. And this morning, as we talk about resentment, resentment is, is a bitter indignation having been treated unfairly. And I even address with this, some things we thought we were treated unfairly until I found out what the deal they got, I really got a better deal. You know, sometimes it's in your mind, resentment, bitterness. It, it's what you think. You, 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 you tend to think you've been treated unfairly or whatever. Re resentment is something that, that most of us have to deal with, may need to deal with, and look at me. And I'm not trying to be a, 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 a downer Debbie or whatever they call them. Is there any Debbies in there? <laughs> but you'll have to face the opportunity for resentment and, and bitterness as you grow forth in this thing. You know, when I was young, it wasn't much about being bitter, being older in age or what happens to your body and stuff. I didn't have that. I didn't have that, you know. I moved on to another level, you know, moved on, you know. You know, and, and you know what resentment to do? It'll tear down and infect people you love. But, you know, I had some people up where we are, and they, they near about had a killing over a fence. And they moved the fence over, and they've mad at those people, and they've, been, they've had trouble for years because somebody moved the fence over. And now the kids come by, they're mad, and they, we don't talk to them, we don't act to them. And now they've entered into the covenant of resentment and don't even know why they're there. I mean, you know, resentment, is a experience. it can be an experience from childhood. How I many you know what I'm talking about? It comes from people, it comes from ministries, it comes from moms, dads, it comes from jobs, it comes from strangers, and sometimes so-called friends are friends. And now it even, you know, he, he calls just, you know, this resentment, this bitterness even, even comes with legal lovers and illegal lovers. You've got to deal with all of it. Can some, somebody say amen? So, Brother Jay, I just don't think we that bad sometimes. Well, it ain't you I'm talking to. I'm talking to the guy behind you, amen. But, you know, I mean, you know that, that if you're not careful, 
Things will cause you to be bitter. They really will. And we'll go into it and we'll call it something else. And you know, how many of you know that, that, that bitterness is even in the family, can be seen in the family, amen. God warms it in the family with your kids and where it gets started, amen. Now, I told y'all, we, we didn't raise too many we could talk to. We had to whip our kids. <laughs> maybe it was us that couldn't talk to them. Maybe it was. But look at, in, uh, in uh, Colossians 3, and I'm sorry about the 18th verse, Colossians 3. And, you know, so, you know the fact is that, that no one is really exempt from uh, any kind of uh, resentment or, or getting in bitterness, in bitterness. And you know what it is? That people will give it another name. They'll give it another name. Well, I, I'm just taking precautions. Oh, well, you don't go over there and fool with them. You're just taking precautions. <laughs> but it, in uh, Colossians uh, 3, 18 and 18, it said, Wives, submit yourself to your own husband, for it is fit to the Lord. Husband, love your wife and be not bitter against them. Children, obey your parents and you won't get in trouble. Oh, wait a minute. Children, obey your parents in all things, for this is well-pleasing to the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, at least they be discouraged. Now, now look what's happening. It's right there. And he's telling the wife, wife what you ought to do is, is, is be a wife to your husband. Have your own husband. That's what he said. He said, put that time in it. Amen. You know, we talked about comparisons last week. You know, a lot of people compare their husband and their wives to other people's husbands and wives. You're making a mistake, amen. So he tells us it's possible to make bitter. It's possible to discourage your children. Let me tell you, when children are discouraged, they become resentful. You don't even know. You don't even see it. For, Boy, you better get out of here with this addict. No, you're dealing with a spirit of resentfulness. How I many of y'all know a lot of things start out regular, but they turn into spiritual things? The enemy comes in, amen. Proverbs 14 and 10 says... The heart knows its own bitterness, and no stranger shares in the joy. Now, he's not saying about the joy of bitterness. He's talking about the heart. He said, nobody knows bitterness. You know, when you got, nobody knows the bitterness like you know. You know your own bitterness. People say, well, I don't know if I'm so much bitter about it. Well, the Bible said you know your own bitterness. And, and, and if somebody else, a stander by, a friend, somebody else can't take your joy. I can look at you and see I'm happy for you, but I can't really take on the joy that you have. See, some people got bitterness. Come on, he said that he knows his bitterness. You know, he's not trying to give you something you don't have. Amen. But you know what? But the inner part of a man, you know, that's the part that, that, that we're talking about this morning. You know, it doesn't take a great prophet to look at somebody and say, boy, he's all upset about that. that that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about that secret resentment. We're talking about that secret bitterness. We're talking about that stuff that you make uh, plans to keep and excuses to have. Amen. Y'all ain't nobody listening to me, amen. You know, let me tell you what. Uh, I don't know where to start. You know what, that, that some people are, are deceived into thinking that it's some kind of strength to be bitter. They'll say that, well, as long as I do that, they won't never hurt me. As long as I don't let them get involved in my life, listen to me. You stay in this ministry long enough, and you'll have about three friends. But they'll be the best ones you could ask for. They the ones that'll dive off and they'll bow an alligator for you. These the people I'm talking. Remember, real friends. That's the ones I need. Can you say amen? I need a friend to throw me out from in front of the vehicle. That's what I need. Amen. But you know that other stuff that, that people have, and, and they have that, and, and people think it's strength, and they'll call it something else. The truth is, being resentment and bitterness becomes sin. That's all we need to say. It. Matthew six and fourteen. He said. And we know it. We've heard it. Most of us can repeat it. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Yeah, they did it. They did it. He said, if you forget, it's a given that they do it. But the part is that you do something about it and do your part. Can somebody say amen this morning? You know, nobody, nobody, listen, nobody can build their happiness on the unhappiness of others. See, some people stay in resentment because they're, that now they become unhappy. And when people see them, they oh, they're still mad. You know? you, you, listen to me. You can never have a happy life giving somebody else, come on, trying to make somebody unhappy or happy. You can't do that, amen. Now, it is a true saying. It, it is something to it, men. A happy wife is a happy life. Now, there is something about that. I don't know if it's in the Bible, amen. It's in my wife's handbook, amen. <laughs> no, and you know what we're talking about? We're talking about uh, uh, bitterness and resentment, past and present. We're talking about imagined and real. 
You said, imagine, really, yeah. Some people say, yeah. Uh, uh, they'll, they'll deny it and all that. So you go, oh, I don't go over there. Well, hold on, why don't you go? I can go anywhere I want to go. Y'all listen to me? I'm not going to let people and attitudes keep me from going where I want to go. Can somebody say amen? You see, but some people get that way and they stay in that, in that trespass or that whatever it is. And they stay at thinking that, that, that it's present, future, wherever it could be. And even if it's real or imagined, resentment keeps us from and bitterness keeps us from the fullness of walking in Christ. You can't be all bitter about that and be about that. People bitter with their childhood. And, you know, people bitter all kind of things. People bitter with races. People bitter with stuff. They join people in stuff that they don't even have any business in. Can you say amen? Had a particular uh, uh, a bunch we, uh, across the river, and you go a little bit further across the river, and it seems like they wouldn't any, want any you know, black people that far, and they'd be going, and they would have the you know, rebel flags, and they'd do stuff. You know, not everybody, but a handful. But life changed when their grandbaby came up with sickle cell. Something changed. That means that you're not white. You think you're white. <laughs> well, I have, and they were resenting what they really were. Isn't that crazy? People resent sometimes the wrong things and for the wrong reasons, amen. And when we get to that, and you know what? This stuff is self-inflicted, some of it. You get in the news and get, get resentfulness of people. Well, I just don't think people like that. Wait, hold on. That's not going to change nothing. Where are you at? Where are you going to walk, amen? In order to be an overcomer, we got to be aware of and overcome resentment and things that we have in our life. Resentment will justify itself until we no longer can see what it is and, we, and we, what it really is, and that's sin. Well, it's not really resentment. I just have reservations. Well, okay. Well, you know. Go with me to Ephesians 4, and I want you to look at the company. How many of y'all know I've said for years that your hangout will determine your come out? I said your hangout's going to determine your come out. Well, your hangout. Now, I want you to look at the group here that's hanging out with Mr. Bitterness or Mrs. Bitterness. Amen. I kind of looked for Brother Bucket Mouth to be in there, but he wasn't. Amen. <laughs> Ephesians 4, and I'm going to start 31. He said, get rid of all bitterness. So there must be different kinds. There must be different kinds of. He said, and he said, get rid of. He said, he said, get rid of all, not some, but all. There's different kinds. And, and when it must be doable, and it's up to me to do the getting. Anybody say amen. Rage and anger and brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be you kind and compassionate one to another, forgiving each other, just as Christ forgave you. Uh, forgave you. The Amplified 32 says, Be ye kind and helpful one to another, tenderhearted, compassionate, understanding, forgiving one another readily and freely. Readily and freely. How many of y'all, whenever the, we, we feel like we might be getting into trouble with God, we're going to do it? How many of y'all know, come on, when it looked like we pushed it, it looked like we're not getting a response? How you know so much about it, Brother Jerry? That just, again, ain't none of your business. Amen. <laughs> just as God in Christ Jesus forgave you. You can see that, you know, the company of bitterness is rage and anger and brawling and slander and malice. And sometimes we don't think resentment's that much. Well, the company, it's got a pretty bad company, can you say amen? Malice, that's the intent to do you wrong, to, to lie, to turn you, to, to, to be against your rage without control. Brawling is fighting, slander. Uh oh, slander, talking about people. You know, that's usually what people do when they're in resentment, they slander other people. Look at your neighbor and say, Neighbor, now, Pastor Jerry, not saying you do that, but you know you do. What well, you do? <laughs> but the company of it, and, and no, no matter, no matter how resentment shows up, it's deadly, it's wrong, and it doesn't help us. Yeah. But think about that. Just, just, just they got. Well, I got my own thing about that. They'll be doing good. I've seen people said, "Well, you know, I, I don't fool with them people." Hold on. I didn't know they was a den of snakes. Hold on. No, they're in resentment, and they're trying to pass it to me. A lot of people pass it to you. 
You know, you, I, you know the Bible says? The Bible says for you to not to join an angry man in his way. It said, at least you learn his way. I may be uh, saying, uh, quoting it wrong, but what he's saying, when, when you go, know this, either people are going to be like you and me or we're going to be like them. Let me tell you that again. Either we, the people we hang around with, the people where we go, the people in our life, the pe- either they're going to be like us or we're going to be like them. Because your hangouts determine your come out. You know, I, I told a guy, he said, he's lost and undone. He's my best friend. He's like, look, he's probably not your best friend if he's lost and undone. You'll never see him in eternity the way things are going. Can you say amen? You know, God knows uh, that, that uh, you know, this is truth. God knows that people treated you terrible. God, people, people have treated other people terrible. People, give people opportunity to, to have resentment. God knows that, and he's not even telling you that it doesn't count that they did against you. God keeps up with it all. Can somebody say amen? The spiritual truth is that, that all people in your life, either you're going that way or they're going the way that you're going. Can you understand that? You know, the Bible doesn't say forgive and forget, but it does Give us the idea that we can continually forgive and continually move on and not be infected with stuff of the past. Can you see me? Yeah, but I ain't for God. You know, that's what people say. They'll, this is what they'll say. They'll say, uh, I forgive them, but I ain't for God. No, what you really said is, I haven't forgiven them, and I really haven't forgiven them. <laughs> it's really what you're saying. Do you know that, that forgiving people is somewhat like a divine act? It really is. It, it's, but, you know, we don't look at it that way. So, so how many of you will agree with that? And I'm setting y'all up for the next statement. How many, how many of y'all would agree? Come on to that. How many would, would, would agree to that? So if, if it is a divine act, resentment and bitterness is the opposite of a divine act. You know what company is in us, slanders and so on and so forth. You know, we'll just have to choose to where we want to be. I want to be better. I want to go better. I want to move forward in those things. You know, if I really want to, I can. If I really do not want to, I never will move. But you got to go with it. It is. Peter said this. Peter, uh, 1 Peter 1, 2, and 3. We're saying it's a divine act. 1 Peter 2 and 23. He said they hurled their insults at him. We're talking about Jesus. And he did not retaliate. When he, when he suffered, they made no threats. He made no threat, excuse me. Instead, he entrusted himself to him who just justifies or judges justly. You know what he said? He said he leave it up to him. Jesus didn't. He left it up to the Father. You know what we want to do? We want to take matters in our own hand. Anybody in here listening to me? Jesus said that, that, that forgive and, uh, them. He said, Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. That's a divine act. You know, never lose sight of what Jesus did for you because of what you did. Never lose sight. Come on. That Jesus died for for what you did. You know, sometimes we think it's them other. Sometimes we think we just, we just. No, we, we, we need to understand it cost heaven something for him to. And he just asked a little bit of us. He said, get, do away with all bitterness. So there must be different kinds. So it must be disguised bitterness. It must be justified bitterness. It must be okay bitterness. It must be bitterness that I'm not going to. It's all kinds to get rid of. But you know. There's no Bible reason, not one scriptural reason, you, me, or them have for not forgiving people. There's not what you, the the Bible will not back up, it will not, it will not support you. So this becomes a push against God and his word. Tell me in that better way. Never lose sight of that. You know, uh, 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 resentment that affect the great grace of God in your life. When people are bitter, they, they lose close fellowship with the Lord. They don't understand what's going on. You don't understand why he's quiet. Well, well you know, he can be quiet without you being in trouble, but sometimes he's quiet trying to get you out of trouble. He's still. Oh, better check on and find out what he's saying. 
Hebrews 12 and 15 says, Looking diligently, least any man fail the grace of God, least any root of bitterness spring up troubling you, thereby many be defiled. It defiles others. Now, who, who do you think is the easiest people, the easiest people to pass a sickness or a disease to? The people whom you're in contact with. <laughs> if we've learned anything from COVID. <laughs> They chased me for six months trying to find out where I'd been. <laughs> yeah, I don't know where I was at. Amen. I don't know. I, would, I don't know. Is that, look, is that me on video? I believe that's an actor. That might not be me. <laughs> might not be me. Amen. But he said, look at Dylan. He said, at least the root of, of bitterness spring up and trouble you. And, and people think that when we're in bitterness and whenever we're in unforgiveness that we're giving them a bad time. Well, that's not true. You're getting the bad time. It's happening to you. You know what, if we, you allow it to go, it'll fester. Anybody know what fester is? <laughs> remember, remember the guy on, uh, what was the monster, whoever, Uncle Fester. <laughs> Uncle Fester. My uncles are running sore. I mean, we need that guy. But, you know, resentment becomes part of your conscious mind. Then it becomes part of your subconscious mind. And, and you really push away from it because, you know, you don't know and, and do it, and you don't think about it. You almost took one. Oh, I don't. Who, it almost happened. You, you, you was, a, you was snoozing on. You was snoozing on your resentment. Then, whenever it happened, you, you take it. You take place. Fact, you know, is resentment and bitterness. It, it cannot be rational. You understand that? Look at me, and I'm gonna get into a list. I've got a list for everybody. Because <laughs> I'm on the list. You on the list? You know that that resentment will take us away from the Father, not to the Father. Resentment, we'll justify it. We'll find a reason to do it. People will disguise it and whatever it is. But you know what the real truth is? That God's word and God's spirit can reveal to us where it's at if you want to. If you really want it to change. Resentment cannot be logical. Resentment cannot disconnect itself from the situation. But grace can. Mercy can. Love can. If I'm in resentment, I will never give you your charge. I will never give you your levy. I will never give you your opportunity. But grace will give it to me. Peace will give it to me. Y'all listen to me? It's so unlike. It's so unlike. And, and Well, you know, I, I, I'm just going to move on. And I, no, are you really moving on? It don't sound like you're moving on. But it, but it never can. Resentment can never, never express itself in fairness. It, it, it never, when the resentment talks, they're wrong and you have, you have done nothing. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, a bitter person is their own worst enemy. Yeah. You know, have you ever, you know what's the difference in sweet old grandmas and sweet old grandpas? Bitterness. <laughs> You see somebody, they're sweet and elderly, they're sweet. Usually they feel good. Usually they got a good relationship. Y'all listen to me? And you see the other, the other that's mean and look like they ain't happy about nothing. They're living in resentment. Amen. Get off my grass. Get up. That's what I told you. We had the man live down the street. We pick it up and we look down and he goes, I don't know what he said, but we better set it down and get out of here. He better get out of his barn. He don't want us in here. It don't seem like it. I know y'all never did that, amen. But, but, it, but, you know, if you're not careful with resentment, it becomes chronic. It becomes chronic. People, people look, just look for things to be upset about. Come on. But, you know, bitterness it brings a, a bondage. I'm getting close, but I ain't through. Acts 8 and 23 says, For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of of iniquity. So you see, uh, <laughs> bitterness is controlling bonds. And he's talking about iniquity. He's talking about wrongfulness. He's talking about uh, uh, unjustness, unrighteousness, just being wrong. That's what he talks That's what it, it, it accompanies. And it brings a, a bond, a chain to us. You know, you just think about that. It's, very, maintain, uh, it's hard to maintain relationship with people correctly if we always are in resentment, always bitter, always have some. We see that all the time. We see he's just a bitter old man. We see him and say, she's going to die a bitter old woman. You know, isn't it a funny 
How we can see it in others and not see it in ourselves. But it will affect our relationship with the Lord. How many of you believe that? You know, unforgiveness retains and, and past sins. And you know what they do? They, they have a place in our life that, that they should not have a place in our life. You know, it, it, it's no true reason to not forgive. Y'all ready to go to Realville, uh, uh, to Realville this morning? Yeah. Right, who, who, who's, the, who's the mayor of Realville? But Jay's the mayor of Realville. We go to Realville this morning, amen. And, I, and I'm talking about getting old, Brother Chaz. I'm, talk, I'm talking about where you live, amen. How many of y'all know we love you? Do y'all think God loves you enough to meddle in your business? You know what God's talking about? God's talking about, God's talking about getting past bitterness and, and resentment for all the people that hurt you bad. That's what he's, talk, that's, that's what he's talking about. God's talking about all the people who hurt you when you was a child. He, that's who he's talking about. He's talking about that. He's talking about the resentment of that. This morning we're talking about getting over that. You know, God's talking about all the people that hurt you when you were in love with them. I'm going to get over where you live in a minute. Amen. God's talking about all the people that you thought you loved. God's talking about all the people that did you wrong again and again. And you know what? The best way to stop them from again is I stay in resentment, and when they come, I don't let them in. Well, Got to get past that, amen. God's talking about all the people that owed you money and never paid you back. Man, I did not know that. Sister went right there. Damn. You got to get over that. Well, he got me for 20. He ain't never getting me again. <laughs> you know what I found out when people don't want to pay you when they come back thinking they'll get something out? Just go ahead and give them the last money, and we're good. I'm just going to give it to you. We're done. We, we even. We're done. Now, how can they argue with that? They went away debt free. Amen. Yeah, God wants you to forgive all the people that, that never paid you back. I, didn't, I had to put a star by that one. I didn't know it was such a good one. Amen. God's talking about all the people. <laughs> that should have but never said, I'm sorry. Now, I just want to tell you right now, I'm sorry for what they've done. I'm really, I'm, 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 I'm really, I'm sorry for what happened to you when you was a kid. I'm sorry for what happened in your life. I'm sorry for what people had done to you. I'm sorry if it's not on the list. I, I am sorry. But we have to move on past resentment. You know, if we're going to win souls for the kingdom of God and we're going to look forward to Jesus coming, the church is going to have to heal up, fill up, and build up. And it may be less than it was, but there's going to be more power than it ever has been. But we can't stay in the junk and think we're going to have the treasure. Just like me and you. God's talking about all the people that left you for somebody else. That happens. Well, sometimes people leave other people emotionally. They're called absentee dads and absentee moms. Somebody listen to me. God's talking, about, God's talking about the person that, that left you for drugs. God's, God's talking about the person that wrecked your life. That's what God's talking about. Boy, this big stuff, huh? You know, now, look, now we're talking about people, their lives have been wrecked, and God requiring them to, to come out of bitterness, let all bitterness, and let it, all, let it go, all bitterness. Well, that's talking about all the people that wrecked your life. Listen to me. I, did, I missed the note somewhere. But you know that resentment can be imagined or real, but it has to be dealt with. Demons can be imagined or real, but they still have to be dealt with. Somebody said, that, that's not a demon, that's them. Well, it still needs to be dealt with. Anybody listening? God's talking about the people that wrecked your life. God's talking about the people that did whatever to you, and you hold the resentment, it only hurts you, not them. And if you didn't make the list today and you know you need to be on, get with me after church and I'll put you on the list. And then, and then I'll uh, add that to my notes. You know that, <laughs> you know that bitterness and resentment really is one of the few pains we can control. Make it like over beside you. Bitterness and resentment. Now, if you don't think it has torment, if you don't think it has problem with it, 
we're going to have to start again. But it's the only true pain that you can be in control of yourself. Get rid of the. You let it go, there's no torment. You let it go, it, it, it's nothing that holds you to. There's no bonds. He said, in the bitterness of, of the bonds, he's talking about being locked up in it, that it restrains us and keeps us and holds us. I, you know, we really don't know how much we could love until the love of God touches us and we quit looking at people and look to God for it, that things are changing our life is what I have. But anyway. Oh, people will put, get you out there. People will put up a fence. People will do things. Amen. They'll point spears at you and say, run to me, daddy. <laughs> Just think of it. It's the only pain you really can control. You know that, that resentment, it, 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 don't you stand with me this morning. You know what resentment is like. Two things that resentment and bitterness is like. It's like being snake bit and stepping on a nail. And you know nobody dies from a snake bite. Nobody dies from a snake bite. They die from venom. Nobody dies from a nail. They die from the infection that comes with the nail. You see, it's not just that the resentment and the bitterness, it's the bonds of affliction. It's the things that happen. It's the infection that comes after it. It's that, that internal, but you know, a snake bite doesn't show outside near as much as it shows inside. It goes into the eternal organs. It goes into the heart and the liver, and it begins to shut down. And you know what? It's a poison. Uh, it's a poison. Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. He, he's talking about the ones that owed you money. He's talking about the ones that done you wrong again and again. He's talking about the ones that you forgave and they did it again. Yeah, he's talking about them. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to talk about it. Amen. So people just don't die from snake bites. They, they don't die from that. They, they die from the infection. They die from without the care of it. You know, it's a sad thing sometimes that, that we're our own worst enemy. We're the one got us this way. Because we didn't have anywhere to turn, we blame people and life and situations. But people just don't do that. You just people don't. And you know what you can't do? Is not let people infect you like a dirty nail. Infect you on the other side of a snake bite. You know, when, when people have the report and they start up and they talk about somebody, Brother Pete, when they talk about them, they talk about what they did wrong to them. That's what they start out with. They're in bitterness. They're in resentment. And they just join. You have just joined their company. And they're trying to recruit some. Oh, my goodness. That sounds like the Holy Ghost starts there, man. You know, you got to be diligent, not let people infect you. You know, people say, I, I forgive, but they won't forget. Well, it's the same thing. You know, forgiveness and, and, and getting over that is an activeness. It's an it, it's a activeness in my will. All bitterness and resentment and unforgiveness can be found in the soul realm of a person. Because your spirit man's been born again. Your spirit man's like him. When you receive Christ, you receive the spirit of Christ. But you see, the soul rim, the, the soul rim retains everything that's happened to it. Jesus said, forgive them for they know not what they do. Peter said that, that, that when he had opportunity, he didn't rail on them. He didn't say anything. He didn't say any of those things. He didn't, I mean, you know, he knew, he, knew what, he knew what could smash anybody in the room. He could have smashed anybody while he was on the cross. He could have smashed everybody. He said, forgive them for they know not what they do. And listen to them. I'm going to tell you, from experience, there's no warm, fuzzy feelings about it. It's a faith thing. It's an it's a action of the will that I desire to. I want to get over that stuff. You know, some, some people got little bitty stuff. It just hides back there in the back. Come on. Mm. But you know, when I really forgive, when I really let go of bitterness, when I really let go of resentment, this is the key. I give up my right to cause them pain. I give up my right to punish them. I give up my right. And if this is true, and it is, if it is, why 
does this resentment and stuff stay behind? Why does it stay? Because we have not dealt with it. Oh, my goodness. I'm going to tell you this morning. Resentment, unforgiveness, bitterness will cost you one thing. Your pride. Well, you know, I, I got to be a little more man than that, you know. You know, you just can't let them stand. You know, you, just, you, know. you know, if you study, start dating. Yeah, you find out. Y'all listen to me. Find out all the reasons. And I said, we have no justified reason not to forgive them. We have no justified reason. Now, they hung him on the cross. They nailed him to that cross. They spit upon him. They put a thorns upon his head. They beat the, it down with a reed on his head. And as he, you know what he said? Forgive him. Say something with care. He said, mother, behold thy son. Son, behold thy mother. I'm taking care of business. I'm taking care of my mother while I'm here. Because it would affect people around him. It would affect people around you. Amen. But how many of you want to give up the right to punish this morning? Just give it up. Give up the resentment. Give up those things. And, and, and I'm serious about if you're not on the list I, and, and you're getting off this morning, <laughs> I want you to let me know if I miss something. I want to know. But you know, how many know it's room for improvement? But we're moving for church. We're moving. And let me tell you, when we get for that, when we get out of that, you cannot, you can only obtain and, and maintain so much of anything within you. And the less junk we got, the more compassion and love and more of the word and stuff we can have in our lives and access that. You know what? You, you can tell people say, well, I tell you what I'd do if that was me. Uh, tell me what Jesus would do. And you know what I found out what Jesus would do? You know what he'd do first? He'd love first. That's what Jesus did. He'd love first. The thing we do only after they deserve it, only after they make us feel right, only after we save, only after we don't think. Anybody know what he's talking about this morning? Father, we just come to you in Jesus' name. And Father, we just proclaim we're people that are just in need. And Father, we thank you from where you brought us, Lord, where you're taking us, Lord. And we just thank you for just fine-tuning the body of Christ, Lord. That we make room for the word. That we make room for joy and peace and compassion, Lord. That we make room for those. And, Father, that we'll have the correct hangout, Lord. We'll hang out with the Holy Spirit. We'll hang out with the word. And we'll be like you. And, Father, we know that they really don't deserve to be forgiven no more than I did. But you did forgive me. And you did forgive them. So we're going to make the choice, Father God, to forgive them. We're going to release from them. Just kid stuff that's coming up, marriage, just life, kids, adults, parents, things happening, Lord. Things that are imagined, things that are real, things that's been around, things that are trying to come up tomorrow. We just ask that the Holy Spirit would lead us and guide us, Father. We thank you for victory. We thank you, Father God, to train us up. And Father, the other day, Father, you, you told us that it was going to call for maturity and I just never seen it as great a need as today we love you Father God we thank you for sending your son Jesus and in Jesus name we pray amen and amen oh give him a big hand clap of praise this morning